welcome to your final session just focusing on uncertainties. Um, so I've gone back to my um, page of repeated measurements because our final, our, well only our second, but also our final uncertainty type is random uncertainty and it's all about describing how different your repetitions were when you repeated an experiment for reliability. So um, the, the formula for random uncertainty is actually in your formula list. So I'm going to make my note right here. Um, if you can't do it right under your repetitions, then don't worry at all, but have your repetitions in front of you. Okay, so random uncertainty is a formula you simply plug numbers into and you get a number out. It still has all the same uncertainty rules, so your answer has to be to a single significant figure and you can give it as an absolute uncertainty in the unit and as a percentage uncertainty. So in the formula sheet, the random uncertainty formula is given in two ways. It's given in words and in letters and you'll notice again they're using delta r for delta random as well so delta r can be reading uncertainty or random uncertainty in advanced tar we've also in the past um, used delta u as random uncertainty i'm not sure why that's been the letter i'm sure somebody else knows um but um so we're but we can use delta r all the way through higher so there's no need to get confused so um, let's do our random uncertainties for all three of our repeat, repeated measurements. So for our five lines, it's going to be pretty easy. Okay, um, so delta R, random uncertainty, is equal to our maximum value minus our minimum value over the number of values. So that is, I'm just going to go through with it, 3.95 minus 3.95 over five different repetitions. So N is the number of repetitions. And that is, of course, zero centimetres. Okay, so there is zero random uncertainty in that measurement. So obviously the biggest uncertainty in that measurement is the reading uncertainty. Okay, for our graphs, Here's where you're going to have slightly different numbers to me. So delta R equals R max minus R min, following the good physics rules. You don't ever do a calculation without the formula first. Okay, so for my maximum measurement, that was 10, 10.30, I think, minus 10.10. And I did that for five repetitions. Oh, sorry about that. 10.3 minus 10.1 all over 5, 0 0.04 units. So I have a random uncertainty here of 0 0.04 centimetres. So therefore my mean um, measurement here is 10 getting it from my mean here, 0.24 plus or minus 0.04 centimetres. Your random uncertainty is the uncertainty in your mean. When you calculated a mean, how different were the numbers that you calculated it from? So they're all supposed to be the same. If it was a perfect measurement, they would all be identical. Because it is not and there it's nothing is perfect really um we get a variation in numbers so this random uncertainty describes that when i measured this when i calculated this mean it describes how varied the numbers were that contributed to it okay one last time for my times delta r equals r max minus our min over the number. So for me, that's um, 6.60, and you do your numbers, uh, minus 5.90 all over five. Uh, 
and that is 0 0.1 seconds. So my mean there is 6.40 plus or minus 0 0.1 seconds. Now you'll notice guys that now my random uncertainty here is, um, has fewer sig figs than my measurement. Now the uncertainty rules, okay? So I now have to state my mean as 6.4 plus or minus 0 0.1 to make them match, okay? Now I know this is this odd scenario where you can have, because the first uncertain, the first significant figure is a one, I can write that as 0 0.14, okay? <clears throat> and then um, it, I wouldn't have to cut that off. But again, in higher, it's just far better to stick to single sig fig rule and not let yourself get confused. So single sig fig of uncertainty, if the uncertainties don't, if it doesn't match, then you make your measurement match your uncertainty. There is one other kind of uncertainty that they will bring up in higher, but it's not something you have to calculate. It's just something you have to be able to recognize. And that is a systematic uncertainty. Now, let me show you what it looks like and then I'll explain how it comes about or what it is. So, say we are doing um, a classic Ohm's law experiment, okay? And you've got V in volts up the side and current in amps along the bottom. Now we know that Ohm's law for a fixed resistor should be a directly proportional relationship through the origin. And the gradient of that line tells us the resistance of our resistor. If we, we carried out this experiment and our experiment had a systematic uncertainty in it, this is what our graph might look like. So you can see that we get the same gradient, the relationship between our variables is unchanged. That's fine. We would still, if we wanted to, the purpose of our experiment was to calculate the gradient and find the resistance, we would be fine. But we are no longer displaying a directly proportional relationship. We have missed our origin, which means every single one of our measurements is slightly wrong by exactly the same amount, which puts their relationship still being the same so we get a nice straight line at the correct gradient, but the line has been shifted, okay? So a systematic uncertainty or a systematic error is when you, when you carry out your experiment, you make the same mistake or you, you misread or you make a measurement mistake in exactly the same way every single time. Um, a classic example would be um, when we were doing our speed of sound measurements and we were measuring the distance between the speakers, if we measured the distance from the speaker box to speaker box, rather than where the speaker actually is in that box, we will get a systematic uncertainty in our speed. If um, we are making a, um, a trolley and tracks experiment, and we have to measure the distance that our trolley travels. If we measure the distance from the front of the trolley to the light gate, rather than from the mask that passes through the light gate to the light gate, we will get a systematic uncertainty. So we are making the measurement wrong, but by making the measurement wrong exactly the same way every time, the relationship between our variables is still fine, but we will miss um, the intercept where it's supposed to be, okay? So your job as higher physicists is to be able to recognize a systematic uncertainty, and they're also very useful to you in evaluations. So when you're evaluating your own experiment, which are worth, which are worth significant marks to you for your assignment, um, if you notice your line misses the origin, the first thing you want to say in your um, evaluation is that you have a systematic uncertainty, suggest what it might have been, and how you might fix it in the future. 
So you'll find folks in the description of this uh, video, you'll find a link to a tutorial covering all the uncertainty stuff that we've done so far. And when I see you in our next video, I'll be starting to introduce um, data tables at Hire. How do we incorporate reading and random uncertainties into our data collection and uh, starting to move towards that final experiment that we're going to do. Thanks very much. See you folks.